Hey y'all, welcome back for another hunting ammo ballistics gel test. Today we've got the warp speed load. We've got Norma Evo Strike 127 grain in 7 millimeter Remington Magnum. This stuff is gonna be flying. And here is your very cool looking box for that Norma Evo Strike lightweight 127 grain 7 millimeter Magnum load. Let's go ahead and flip it around to the back. There's a lot of promo information on here. Usually I don't talk too much about the promo information. Um, I'll just kind of have it like this where you can stop, pause, and read it if you would like. But this is a pretty unique bullet, so we're going to talk about it for just a second. So right here it says, Evo Strike achieves its convincing performance with dual cores made from tin and featuring a special pre-fragmentation of the frontal core. This creates outstanding stopping power even at long range. So I've read the rest of this as well. Feel free to stop, pause, and read that if you would like to. But what I take that as meaning is that the front of this bullet is supposed to fragment up and the back is supposed to hold together and continue penetrating. So we'll see if that happens. So right here, you've got a little graphic of that. You've got the full bullet, you've got the front peeling back, and then you've got the base that continues on through. And then, you know, the pedals, I assume, break off and have a fragmentary effect. So it'll be interesting to see how this stuff performs. It is meant for medium game. We've got a white-tailed deer, wild hog, mountain goat, and elk icons right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the velocity chart, trajectory chart, and all that. So muzzle velocity is stated at 3,314 feet per second. This stuff is screaming. We'll see how close we get to that. My camera is acting up. It's not wanting to stay focused. And as per standard, Norma comes with these handy little five round, crack them in half, ammo holders. You can throw them in your pack or your pocket. Nice and handy. I actually really like these. Push down here, then push up and they come right out. Let's whip it out and take a look. See if my camera will focus again. This is some nice looking stuff. It's got that nickel coated jacket. Really, really clean looking brass. Let's go shoot it and see how it does. And my test rifle today is my Tika T3X laminate stainless, chambered in seven millimeter Remington Magnum, of course. It's got a 24.3 inch barrel. It did not come threaded. I had that done after the fact. Up top, we've got a Leopold VX Freedom Scope. And coming on back, I've got to show you one of my handmade leather cartridge cuffs. Check out my website, masonleather.com to get yourself one. I would love to make you one. This one, we've got seven mags stamped right in to let everybody know the lightning is about to strike. I've also got one of my super thick Latigo leather slings here. Check out my website for these as well. If you're looking for a leather sling that will last a lifetime, you're going to want to check these out. And coming around to the other side, I've got to show you my elk design. And real quick, if you're watching this video anytime around when it came out, I'm having a huge sale on my website, masonleather.com. Go check it out and get yourself something. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And here are your velocities for that lightweight 127 grain Norma Evo strike load out of the 7 mag, minimum 3100 feet per second, max 3155 for an average of 3128. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting that Norma Evo strike lightweight 127 grain stuff out of the 7 millimeter Remington Magnum. And we did capture all three bullets. Let's go ahead and look at penetration real quick. We've got one, it's right there. There's a little like crease in the block, it's hard to see right there, it's, it's kissing 25 and a half inches. Then we've got one way down there at, we'll give that one 30 and a half, and this one 31 inches. Now, what's interesting, they all look the same. So I'll look at this one right here. It's right at the top of the block. The top or the tip rather of the bullet is completely gone. 
and the base of the bullet held together perfectly. And it's the same story for the other three. That one looks the same. And then here's a good view of the third bullet. It looks exactly the same. The base held together perfectly and continued penetrating rather deep actually. And what we get is a big shrapnel mess up front. So expansion, as you can see, starts extremely rapidly. And here we'll go over here and look at this. This is from the 150 grain Norma Whitetail I just tested. Look at the initial expansion there. And then look at the initial expansion here. The wound cavity starts a lot sooner with this Evo Strike stuff. And it's very devastating up front between about, I'll keep, I gotta keep my finger out of there. It's like making the camera unfocus. Between really about the half inch, three quarter inch mark all the way back to seven to eight inches and keeps going to about 10 to 11. Gosh, I guess it just keeps on going for that one. But really the big mess stops at about the seven to eight inch mark. And you can see little fragments of bullet in there. So an absolute shrapnel mess. If you put that in the vitals of something, it's gonna do a number on it. And then with the bullet bases holding together as well as they did, even if you hit the shoulder blade or something on something pretty heavy, I don't doubt that it would go through. So this is a very interesting load. Let's go ahead and pull these out and take a look. All right, y'all, we fired it. Let's talk about it. The Norma Evo Strike 127 grain load out of the 7 mag. Weight retention wise, we saw 79 grains, 80 grains, and 80 grains for an average of about 80 grains of weight retention. And that works out to 63% weight retention, which I'm completely pleased with because these bullets did exactly what they were supposed to. Now, if you look at the back of the box, I'll see if I can... There we go, get my camera to focus on it. You can see right there the unfired bullet, the bullet that has, I don't know, gone through a little bit of something, and then what the bullet, you know, is supposed to wind up being like, which is just the shank. It says, oh my gosh. There we go, we gotta let the, the camera focus again. It says, dual cores for extreme shock effect. And I think that's definitely what we got out of this ammo. So while the weight retention is, you know, low versus a lot of other ammos I've tested, I'm completely 100% pleased with it because it did exactly what it's supposed to do. And the base of the bullet is still the majority of the weight. Onto expansion, not a whole heck of a lot to talk about. Look at these bullets here, 0 0.29, 0 0.29, and 0.29 inches. You know, if I had, you know, a more precise caliper, it's probably 0.284, the, you know, seven millimeter diameter, which works out to, you know, one X expansion, essentially no expansion beyond its, you know, starting diameter. But that's because the bullets did, once again, exactly what they were supposed to, the front portion of the bullet is supposed to fragment and break up and create a lot of shock, which these did. And in the base of the bullet holds together and penetrates deep, so I'm very pleased with the performance. Moving on to velocity, we saw a high of 3156, a low of 3100 feet per second for an average of 3128, versus the factory build velocity of 3314 feet per second, so we did come in quite a bit slower, 186 feet per second slow versus box spec. And if I'm not mistaken, that is the slowest versus box spec of any of the seven mag ammos I've tested so far. And I've tested a good handful, even though the videos aren't out yet, I have the data. So I am disappointed there especially when these are advertised as going so fast. I want to see that velocity out of a load that is, you know, purported to be just extra quick. And we didn't get that. And our estimated velocity down there at 100 yards at impact is 2,909 feet per second. On to penetration, we saw 25 and a half inches, 30 and a half inches, and 31 inches for an average of about 29 inches of penetration. Absolutely excellent. These bullets did on target what they were supposed to, which is deliver that big nasty shock up front. The front part of the bullet breaks apart and fragments and makes a big mess. And the base keeps on going. That's what these did. This is deeper penetration than a lot of other 7 mag loads deliver, even though the bullet's starting out very light. And on a kinetic energy with a 127 grain bullet going on average 3,128 feet per second, we're looking at 2,759 foot-pounds at the muzzle and about 2,386 foot-pounds down there at 100 yards. And that's sort of middle of the road down towards the lower tier of what I've seen from most 7 mag hunting ammo. Most of your 7 mag hunting ammo is in the 2700 to 3100 foot pound range and this is towards the bottom of that. 
and that's a direct effect of velocity. Had we had that 186 feet per second that we didn't get that we were supposed to, that kinetic energy number would be quite a bit higher. And a quick announcement before we get to my final thoughts, if you'd like early access to my videos weeks and even months in advance of everyone else, become a channel member. The links will be in the video description and the pinned comment. Thanks y'all. All right y'all, time for my final thoughts on that Norma Evo Strike 127 grain load out of the seven mag. I actually really like the performance of this stuff because it did exactly what it said it was going to do with the exception of the loss. This stuff came in slower than I would like to see. Nevertheless, it still performed really good. Now I'm gonna read off stuff on the back of the box and we're gonna check off whether this ammo did that or not. So the main copy says, Evo Strike achieves its convincing performance with dual cores made from tin and featuring a special pre-fragmentation of the frontal core. This creates outstanding stopping power even at long range. Now we tested this at 100 yards, I don't have the facilities to do it further than that, but at 100 yards it absolutely did that. That front core fragmented up, created a big old mess, the base penetrated through, it did what it said. Additionally, there's some other notes here. Front core of tin with radial perforations for quick expansion, definitely saw quick expansion. Thin jacket for quick expansion, again, definitely happened. Hollowed polymer tip for flatter trajectory and accelerated expansion. As far as flatter trajectory, I mean, we're testing it at 100 yards, so it's neither here nor there, but we got that expansion. Tin lock for tough and uniform residual body. We definitely saw that the base of the bullet held together and penetrated deep. Stable rear core of tin with strong jacket for reliable penetration. Again, it checks all the boxes that it says, except for the velocity number. So all in all, I am extremely pleased with this Evo Strike ammo. I think it performed really well. It's an interesting option and it is a lead free ammo. It says so right on the front of the box under Evo Strike lead free instant stop. As far as instant stop, well, as long as you put it where it's supposed to go, it's probably gonna do a decent job at that. But it is a lead free option if you're hunting somewhere where you can't use lead bullets or if you just prefer not to. So all in all, I'm really pleased with it. If you've used this stuff on game, let me and everyone else know how you liked it. And check out my website, masonleather.com and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade and I would love to make you something. And there are hundreds of reviews on my website so you can see what real hunters have to say about their mason leather gear. And also tons of photos showing all the customizable options, including name, initial, and caliber stamping as well as wild game designs and more. Everything is handmade by me right here in the USA. I would love to be a part of your hunt through my leather gear. And it helps support this channel so I can bring you more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests and lots of other cool stuff in the future. The link will be in the video description and the pinned comment or you can just type masonleather.com into your web browser. And click one of these cards for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.